Anybody know what day Father's Day is? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. The Father's Day gifts are bought with the, the change left over from Mother's Day gifts. Uh, <laughs> Last Father's Day, my no. wife gave me a shirt that was already in my closet. <laughs> I'm ready. I remember the first time I ever did TV was the Uptown Comedy Club. Mm. And it was on Fox TV and I was I was a club favorite but I was never a part of it on TV. And Chris Tucker, his flight was late coming out of California to the show. And they looked around and said, yo, you got seven minutes? And I said, yeah, I got seven minutes. And I performed. I did the fat Michael Jackson. You was in college. <laughs> you might have still been in high school. That was a long time ago. So oh, I did it, I did seven minutes, and from there, I just blew up, then I did Def Jam. And I did Def Jam, if you see it, and Martin saw me, and he looked at me like this. And like a week later, I took one of my sons downstairs to go to school, and I came up, my wife, she said, Martin just called. He said, he, you gonna come out there? And I said, yeah, right. And she said, no, he said, you gonna call back in five minutes. Five minutes later, Martin Lawrence called me back. And I flew out to L.A. that night, and I did Hustle Man. <laughs> and I was scared to death, a young boy, and I made it. And I remember when I met Lauren Michaels at the comic strip. And I auditioned, it was like 1,500 black dudes, and they picked me. Saturday Night Live, so Lauren Michaels is like my Obi-Wan Kenobi. I love that man. Yeah. I love Lauren like I love my daddy, man. That's my boy. He That's gave me and my family a chance. And without that, I wouldn't have met you. True story. I wouldn't have met you. So I don't know how many people know this story, man, but I got recruited in Notre Dame on an accident. They weren't even looking for me. They were looking for another kid. But, you know, you know, Alabama didn't have a lot of traffic lights or traffic signs, so they got lost. And uh, they went to the wrong high school, and they saw this little skinny kid playing middle linebacker and wearing the number 80. Trash. Um, I had a pretty good night that night, and uh, they started recruiting me as a sophomore. They, they offered me a scholarship at the end of that year. So I actually got, Notre Dame was literally like the first school to uh, start recruiting me because it was just As an accident. As a sophomore? A sophomore. It was an accident. He was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, man. They stopped I don't at, think it was an accident, gas station. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think on, that that, on their part, it was an accident. Right, yeah. On, 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 on a good accident. Well, sure. It worked out for both You both did parties. two more years. Two more. And you was already planned. They already had you going to Notre Dame. Yeah. And that's where you went. I did. So wait a minute. As a sophomore, they saw you. Mm -hmm. And they gave you a scholarship right there. Well, the end of the year. So the that end my, of the end year, my sophomore year. Yeah. yeah. You're going into your junior year. Yeah. So all you had to do was stay healthy. Just about. So that's all you had to do. Would they come to the school and check on you? Oh, yeah. I played every sport. So literally, you know, all the, all the coaches. <laughs> Funny story. I used to, I used to, I used to pitch. I used to be a baseball player, and um, one game, man, this uh, this batter like um, slapped the. No, actually, I was at first base. This bat batter slapped the ball, and like, like it almost like hit me in the head, but I caught it. <laughs> and uh, Bob Davy, who was a head coach of Notre Dame, was in the crowd, and he looked at my uh, my baseball manager and he just kind of signaled at him like, get him out the game. Are you serious? Yeah. So I, wow. like my, my high school coach took me out of the game because my Notre Dame coach Let me ask to. you a question. You've seen footage of all those big backs, George Rogers, South Carolina, yeah. Hershey, Bo, uh, Dupree. Yeah. You would have been able to go up against them? Bro, I, I went against the one of the biggest backs on, in history in practice every day. Uh, oh, yeah. Brian Jacobs was 6'4", yeah. 280, and ran a 4'4". Four four. Yeah. That's I mean, I played hell. against Jerome Bus, the Bus, Jerome Bettis. They were big. I mean, let's see who else I played. Like, I, listen, the names you said, the pre Bo Jackson, Herschel, man, them guys were phenomenal, and they made Hall of Fame players look really silly. So I mean, don't don't get it twisted. I ain't I'm, that much respect to them dudes. Right. But listen, I ain't backing down from anybody. I hear that. That's what's up. That's, That's what's how up. I feel about comedy. And Bo Jackson is probably my my favorite athlete of all time. He was incredible. Yeah, that dude. Some of the stories you hear back home, man, is just, high. Well, that, that can't be real. You see, I was on a football team, track team, but I was funny. I was funny in high school. I mean, kids would cut class. They hear me and my boys snap on each other.
Well, when did we make? It had to be through football, though. I think of I course met you. it was. Oh, I know. It was Knicks, actually. The Knicks? We had just, we had just. No, won no, 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 just. In because the last you life, we were probably cousins. Nah, that too. We the probably last had the life same biological father. Yeah. No? Yeah. I think well, that was, yeah. this is what happened. Listen, wait, wait. Family reunion. My mom was cooking. <laughs> And she said, you know, you know your cousin coming over. And I said, who? She Collard said, Justin. And, and I home. said, word! And it was video games in the basketball court every day, all day after that. True story, though. I think we met backstage, Knicks game, because you asked me. You remember this? You asked me, hey, man, why you don't spat? Yeah. <laughs> you asked him why he don't tape, tape his cleats up. Like Walter Payton. Why you don't spat? And you told me you get fined. Five Gs. You did find you? Yeah. So can I ask you a question? And you was like, oh, who yeah, was, that's why you don't spec. Who's the equipment manager? Do they check y'all before every game? Oh, yeah. On like, the sideline? Like, who was that, Joe Morris? Joe Morris is actually one of them. You're a biological dad. Yeah, Joe Morris is my father. That's why you he used to come 20. up to the house. He used to come up to the house. He drove a white van. He used to sell fish out that van. <laughs> that was his day job? My mother said either Joe Morris is your daddy or Tony Dorsett. For a long time, for years, I thought it was Drew Pearson and Franco Harris. <laughs> you got your ring on? What, 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 what figure man, you Man, I wish I would, man. I, was, I ain't bring it. Y'all got the... Them y'all things hurt. I don't wear them. Are you serious? You put them on your hand, everybody want to shake your hand. you're not supposed to wear them. I don't, I know well. You put those on the side. You got two. Two. You got one and your mom's got one. Yeah, my mom got both of them, actually. She got my high school rings, everything. I keep it there. So you've been winning for a long time. Not enough though, man. I got I got I got ten fingers. <laughs> so you should have left. You should have stayed. stayed. You should have stayed. stayed. Coming off the end, you was dynamite. My we man. had a defense that was incredible. Oh yeah. To ask your question. What up? I was told that Coach was a no joke. Strahan, who was the captain, came late one day <laughs> and he sent him home. You probably find him fifteen G's and then sent him home. You serious? Oh, check this out. Well, there ain't no clocks in here. So let's say the meeting was at 10 o'clock. If you showed up at, at 9.56, you were late. late. Fine. I like that. I did, too. I live I by that I like now. that. I live by today. That's why we got all them rings with him. Yo, let me tell you something, man. You grew up in Alabama. Yeah, man. That's historic, man. A lot of things went down there. Oh, yeah. A lot of things, man. Oh, yeah. Heavy stuff. I mean, you came out of there. Yeah, I had to get out of that, man. I had you to get out of that. that though. I had to get out of that because, like, I wanted to see. You wanted to see. The I world. wanted to see the world. Like, no, so, no. Trust me. I, I still have a house down there. I go back as much as I can. I love, I love where I'm from, and I appreciate it. But I mean, like, I wanted to kind of. I mean, New coming York. from Alabama, and playing here in the city, what kind of adjustments was that? Man, I. <laughs> you playing for the Giants, Bruh, kid? I, I grew up in a town that didn't have a traffic light. You always light. wanted to play for the Giants, though. Yeah. I did, actually. My dad was a huge, uh, this is funny, this is a true story. My dad was a huge uh, Yankee fan, huge, uh, huge Giant fan, and he liked the Boston, Boston Celtics. I was glad you came here, man. Oh, yeah. I was so happy you came here. Oh, yeah. When I got yeah, drafted I here, my dad was so happy, bro. Huh? My dad was so happy when I got drafted in New York. What was that? Yo, I, I'm from Brooklyn. All right. All right, boom. But what was it like? The day you got drafted to the New, the, the New York Giants, shake such and such. Mm. What was that like? Uh, I was actually mad. What? I was mad. About what? It was seven defensive ends drafted before me. Oh, I got you. No, nah, I was cool with being a Giant. Can I ask you a question, though? What's up? Can I ask you a question? Any of them got a ring? A few of them do, but not, not, like, not like mine. Not like yours. <laughs> got two rings. Hey, for sure. Who would care? You heard him. Got two rings. That's how I feel. I got this. I got this. My star to walk Hollywood. Out of Brooklyn, I grew up with Jay Z. Bro, you grew up with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah Big E, so Jay. Many people from, yeah, from your part of town. Yo, listen, Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn. That's true. A lot of people don't know that he was born in Brooklyn. That's true. But if you ask me where I'm from, I was, I'm a Brooklyn dude with a Bronx heart. Cause at 13, I moved to the Bronx. Mm. I went up there to save my dad, and I, you know, I was all city halfback. Yeah, your dad was I Franco mean, Harris. Nah, you know? besides that, besides oh, just, it being in my jeans, okay, yeah, yeah. I played for D. with Clinton High School. All right. Yeah, my 40 as a junior was a 4'5", almost a 4'4". What did you weigh? 
I was only like 160. I was a track star. Yeah, you wouldn't have made in the league. No, nah. come on, man. I was too light in the ass. Yeah. Nah, you you touched me, every bone is broken me. <laughs> so I did comedy. But I, I got, you see, I was on a football team, track team, but I was funny. I was funny in high school. I mean, kids would cut class. They hit me and my boys snap on each other. They like, what was your, like, first joke? Or like, like, my I, first joke? Like, my father was Richard Pryor funny. Mm. So when I was four years old, I was, he made me say jokes and everybody laughed. But later on in life, when I got to high school around my peers, is when I really honed in on it. Yeah, I really honed in on it. And I remember telling this dude, uh, I would say things like, your father's car runs by plug. Everybody's mother got a big coat with little buttons. Your mom's got big buttons and a little coat. <laughs> I said, uh, your mom's got one arm longer than the other, and her, she clapped like this. <laughs> uh, she got a. I would, I would, I was, I would just say that. And then um, later on in life, when I got out of high school, my boy Mike Red told me, "You never heard of the Uptown Comedy Club? It's on 125th Street." I said, "I ain't never heard of no Uptown." And he took me out there one day, and I saw Flex Alexander on stage. And I was about to go in, and the lady Miss Brown said, "Oh, baby, it's only fifteen dollars getting here." And I was about to walk out, my boy Rock was doing security. He said, yo, you funny? I said, yeah, I'm funny. He said, you look funny. Come to the <laughs> workshop this Tuesday. And I came to the workshop. And guess who was the first person I met Who? at the workshop? Jimmy Mack. Oh, wow. He died in an accident with me. Wow. Many years later, he's the first person I met in show business, comedy, was him. So he, met, wow. he was very dear and near to me. And I just... What separated me from the other comedians, I was hungry. I had a wife and three kids already. I had my first son when I was 17. You sound like my brother. Yeah. I we got am the same your pops. brother. Yes. I know. I know who I am. Yeah. Don't never give up. Don't never give up on the field, on the stage. When me and my people, when we see one of us down, we pick each other up. That's what team is about. I mean, for me, confidence has always been almost, I ain't gonna say it was easy. He was, it was like, like I said earlier, man, I, you know, I just was a, a kid that never wanted to back down from anything. Um, and I grew up, like, he, he said why he was good at, uh, at comedy and why he made it in comedy because he was hungry. Man, I grew up in Kellison, Alabama. There's t 212 people in Kellison. And now you're in a gladiator. You're, you're in a gladiator stadium. Yeah. So you got to have confidence. Oh, you have Imagine to. those gladiators. I mean, you there, you might get a bone broken. So that was life or death yeah, for those gladiators. Death. Absolutely. But, but in, that's a lot how ways, you gotta, in a lot of ways, it was life or death for me. Yeah, that's how you, know you got to You got to look at it. Yeah. People you don't realize it. that. You can get really seriously hurt. But I'm also talking from the perspective of, you know, I wanted to make it. I wanted to do yeah. something different. Everybody from my hometown kind of went the same avenues. Eddie Murphy told me one day, he said, that's what stand-up is, pure confidence. To be able to stand in front of 5,000, 6,000 people and make them laugh. And make them laugh, people that don't really have nothing to laugh about. But my, my thing has I've always been, when I do uh, comedy, when I make you laugh, is I'm in service to you. Yeah. I'm in service to you. So it's bigger than me. There's somebody out there right now probably ready to go home and just burn their family up in the house. And I'm like, yo, give me that knife. You ain't the only one with problems. You ain't the only one with problems. So laugh. I just, like, watching y'all play, it made me forget about my despair, whatever I was going through for a minute, for two hours. Mm. So I was happy. So you was in service, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. For, to us. So that's how I feel. That's how I look at it with, you know, I forget about your problems for a minute and laugh at me. Because I feel like the court gesture was the most noblest subject in the king's court. He was the only one allowed to tell the king the truth. So I know I made God laugh before I got here. So, you know what I'm saying, that's how I look at it. And if you tell, anybody else tell the king the truth? Off with, off his, with his head. head. I used to always tell him, all right, you want to boo me, come down here and do it. You play quarterback, and mm -hmm. let me let me run after you, buddy. Can't be easy, yo. You got a, you got backs coming out the field, so you would see a back coming out the backfield. Mm. What was that like? 
we felt like they had to deal with us. Like, what are they thinking? Yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. thinking anything. I'm thinking yeah, it's, it's this, it's this overweight, normally white guy, <laughs> trying to block me, <laughs> and I got this unathletic guy up here that can throw the ball a long way. I, I'm gonna win most of those battles, right. and that's how right. I looked at it. Like, you know. But now it's different though. Now, it's not. They oh yeah, really it's have different. Now. Fullbacks no more. They got tight ends. Uh, yeah. And so you got to cover them coming out. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I'm biased. And, like, all my athletes out there are going to say the same thing regardless of what position you play. But, like, I tell people, like, defense, playing defense in, man, you had to be able to stop the run. You had to be able to rush the passer. You had to be able to cover backside of backfields. In some cases, you had to cover tight ends. I mean, in the Super Bowl, I had to cover Wes Welker. Yeah, in certain packages. So, I mean, like, you got to be well-versed. I think I'm, you know, defensive end position yeah, is one of the best athletes. but you also got facilitators. You got people seeing the game, seeing what you're not seeing. Yeah. So y'all coming off the field and y'all looking at footage, yeah. paper, all of that. That You got to take what y'all do because y'all professionals. Yeah. So you got to take what you do serious. Now, did you ever have anybody in the locker room goofing around? On the sideline goofing around? Yeah, that didn't last long, though. Like, you know. Harry Carson wouldn't have took that. Well, yeah. Think, about, think about all the old school cats and just how the games didn't change, right? Right. You know, I used to get snatched up when I was a young cat. Yeah, but me and you talked about that. You can't do that now. You told me that. You said, Tracy, we professionals, man. You get sued. But think about it, right? We all prefer, we all we all out there providing for our families. This ain't right. like we in college, man. We got a scholarship and blah blah blah. Right, right, right. I mean, when I when I left the office, the football field, I'm going back to my wife and kids. Yeah. So when I'm on the football field, I'm out there playing for them. Right. And if if we don't have one person on the same page, they always say like, you know. Wherever, the, wherever the, the mistake is, the ball finds it. Y'all always wonder what, like, the ball cut back or, you know, something like that. It's because the ball always finds the mistake. And if you're so always the mistake, the man, you got to get out of here. The same thing with stand-up, man. You're in front of all them people. I have, I, it does, trust me, I have people writing with me. Yeah. I have people out there. We start conversations on a plane and one word to turn into a whole bit. So it's not just me, my, myself, but I got a whole tour that yeah. I run with. And they got to do their job. So as long as they do their job, they set me up right. I'm set up to win. Yep. So by the time I get on, and I know going into it, I'm not doing this by myself. If you see me at Madison Square Garden, there are five people that come on before me. There are five people that come on before me, and they all nice. Sure. Funny. Geniuses. So they do their job, and I come and I do mine. I'm just a cherry on top of the cake. That's how I look at it, and I love them. And we do it as a family. That's why when you watch the TV shows, he might be directing, but trust me, I'm directing. Me and you just talked about that. Yeah. I gotta, I'm got i the one that's uh, the emotional turns. No, turn here. Emotionally, you got you got to go down. That, that means the scene is going to hit. Yeah. I want the scene to make an impact. I'm an impact player. So whatever you see of you, if they see you on the last OG, you're not going to be you because I'm not putting you in that role. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm trying to dig. Uh, my friend, he's a lawyer. You know what he told me one day? He said, Tracy, all the best diamonds are at the back of the cave. Keep digging. We're going to do the scene until you do it right, True until story. you get it right. That's how it was at practice. That's how it was on the field. One play don't make a game. I'm going to steal that quote, by the way. I like that one. What? Keep all the best diamonds are in the end. All of them. Keep digging. Don't never give up. Don't never give up on the field, on the stage. When me and my people, when we see one of us down, we pick each other up. That's what team is about. That's what team is about. Picking each other up. Hey, we got another play. We're going to get them back on another play. If you, if that joke don't hit, the next joke, you're going to get standing up. If I can make it here, I'll make it anywhere. It's me up to you. New York. New York! We had just won the Super Bowl in 2007. And um, you know how you come down the Lincoln Tunnel? Yeah. And people don't, some people don't know this, some people do. There's like a little slot you can like slide in and, and kind of cut all the traffic off. So my driver was going down there and it was like, oh, you can't come presidential details coming down and um, it was Barack wow so my driver calls his detail on the intercom was like yo we got Justin Tuck you know he has an event can you get through the city and uh, 
Barack, I guess Barack said, I don't know if Barack said it or his team said it, like, yo, we're huge fans. He can lead us through the tunnel. So I ended up leading the, the grade. My car led the, the, the motor cage wow. through the Lincoln Tunnel and wow. ride the Super Bowl. <laughs> that was like, you know, I, mean, I can tell you like crazy fan stuff, but like just, you know, nah, the future nah. president of the, you know, of the, of the, wow. the world. Wow. The allowed, yeah, the free will allowed me to lead him through the tunnel, man. That was pretty dope. Question. I just went to the Super Bowl, right? What, two, what time do y'all get to the stadium? So normally 6 o'clock start uh, because it's the Super Bowl. We get there like four and a half hours early. So we'll be there like 1, 1, 1 30. And then what goes on? We sit around and wait, which is the worst. Everybody's but because it's like, it's like. Everybody trying to stay loose. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we all have our rituals, right? Normal games, I get, I get there probably two and a half hours early, three hours early and get out on the field and get loose. So I mean, honestly, man, the first two hours of being at the stadium, you hot tubbing or you getting taped or doing something just to kind of keep it going over your plays, but you're really just wasting time to be honest with you. So is the police leading the buses going to the stadium? Oh yeah, they don't mess around about that. Right. Awesome. Incredible. You know the Dallas police is probably the best, by the way. Dallas? Yeah, they uh they on the bikes. I was at that game. They don't, they'd be on the bikes and they'd be leading us through. Uh, I saw when y'all, I was there. I saw a police officer kick a mud hole in somebody's car for jumping in front of our bus. Yeah, they don't play. <gasps> Boom! I was they like, wow, play. okay. They don't play. Like, Lucky you like, get like locked it. up. <laughs> I was there with Seal. <laughs> I was with my wife and I was with Seal. I saw it. I was, I was there. Yeah, I can't, I can't go to Seal concerts no more. I took my what? wife to Seal concerts. Why? He did a concert in Atlantic City right after you had the show that, that show that night. Or before, I forget when it was. Just but he see he me? looked at my wife, kind of like, you know, called eye contact. What? I looked. At, you know, he a performer. Do I got to make a phone he call? He a performer, so I kind of let it slide. I but don't perform but nothing. if I see he, if no, I see him, get But if I see him in person, there's going to be some Talk misunderstandings. Huh? You know, there's going to be a misunderstanding if I see him in person. That's right. My wife, you know. And I'm going to be right with you. I'm going to be right with you. Don't play with my brother like that, man. We got Fizz, man, and I like this team. And when the garden's on fire, yo, he's just trying to. What is that quote? The most famous arena where? In the world. The world's most famous. When we bring the ring back, and the ring is coming. The ring is coming. And we're going to make it the world's most famous arena again. I mean, there's just something special about it, Madison Square Garden. Madison Square bro. Garden. It's where Fraser for it's, Ali. I mean, like. It's where Fraser for Ali. It's crazy. Every time I walk in that place, you know, you just look up at the Raptors and you see just history. Um, and, I'm, and again, I'm a kid from Kelton, Alabama, but you know, in my in my day of growing up, man, just watching you and the Starks. Us, and, you know that, Josh. Huh? You know too many, but you Bruh, But us. I'm just saying, though, like, when you I was that. growing up, man, I, that was exciting. That was crazy. Just watching all celebrity roll and just. Yo, what, when we what there, place when me and you there, and me and you, if there's, a, if there's a point, trust me, y'all, we've seen the game from a different perspective. But there's a time when me, I do it, he do it, and everybody else do it. You look over and Clyde is right yeah, there. Yeah, Clyde. That's Clyde. Man. Right there. In 2007, when we brought a ring back here, this place went absolutely berserk. Nuts. All it, down went, it went crazy. Just imagine, man, when, if you when win the Knicks win the here, Knicks bro. Since 72, 73. God. Listen, Wall Street is right down the block. You bring a ring here, <laughs> you can sell all the Big Macs and Cadillacs you want after that. <laughs> It's right down the block. Uh, yeah. You want two with the Giants. Yeah. This, this, that's, that's the key. You got the key uh. to the city. He can walk down any block and everybody know. I, I'm just filming the last OG here. New York City, trust me. New York, ain't no place like New York City. You know what John Lennon, can I quote John Lennon? Go ahead. You know what he said? New York is Rome. You in the center of the universe here. Mm. Everybody want to play for the Giants. Everybody want to play for the, the Knicks. Everybody want to play for the Yankees. New York. New they York. Want to play for, they want to be here. Frank said, if I can make it here, I'll make it anywhere. Saturday Night Live is here. Y'all didn't know he was a, he was a singer as well? It's he up to you. New York. New York. Oh, my God. I think about it. I think about it. Tracy just ruined one of my favorite songs of all time. What? What? <laughs> Barry Gordy wants me to do the remix. I'm trying. <laughs> remix. <laughs> Wall Street is right down the block. For sure. You win some That's where I was coming in. from, right, yeah. by the way. Wall Street? Yeah, man. Are you serious? That's why you got that suit on? 
I thought you went to court. You look like you good. You, you clean up good. You clean up good. My wife dressed me. <laughs>